welcome back to the Off Grid family. Today we're starting a new series which is about chickens and caring for chickens and all the things that go with chickens. Um, I'm going to start off by I've got to build a nice little chicken coop kind of thing but I have to clear the area first I have to sort it out and it, it's going to be some parts are going to be very boring I'm going to speed them up but they're they're relevant to it but I will build the um, chicken coop step by step it's not going to be your regular chicken coop some bits are some bits aren't but I genuinely think you might want to watch till the end of that one I don't know how many episodes it's going to be over because really long process just building the chicken coop but I promise you it will definitely be worth it in the end also then I'm going to be building a incubator we're going to incubate ourselves some little chickies um, etc so it's, you know it's going to be quite an extensive series I haven't stopped doing my wind turbine series that is on the go but it's really really wet out at the moment and I want to do some outdoor tests um, so I'm going to have to waterproof it all first before I can do any testing outside so I haven't forgotten about that, don't worry. So let's get on. I'll start off by showing you uh, very sped up, putting down um, things, and I'm, I'm making it up as I go along. So there will be parts I put there, then I go, no, I don't like that, and take it away. But um, it will, you know, I, I'll try and cut it down to 20 minute um, videos, maybe 40 minute videos. But there, as I say, is a lot to, you know, convey in the in the building process. Okay, hope you enjoy it. We started off by clearing the area where the original chicken coop was and then we put down some stone chippings just to keep you know the moisture below where we put the pallets. Now originally I used three pallets as you'll see but the one in the bottom left hand corner we um, take away eventually. This was all very straightforward. We just took lots of pallets apart before we started so we had lots of strips of wood and all I did was I placed them down and then just nailed and screwed them in place. This was just to give them a, a solid surface to walk on. They're fine walking on pallets as they are. Um, we've got pallets in the garden that they love to play around on. But I just wanted an area where the wind wouldn't come up from underneath. You know, our garden's quite windy. So I just want uh, one area where they're warm, comfortable, cosy, etc. Um, I do apologize about all the pants shots in this, um, you know, uh, I'm a fat guy, it's what happens, it's, you know, it's the law. Um, I would put censored stickers over it, but, you know, I don't have any big enough. This part of the job took probably half an hour to do. Um, we had all of the planks already taken off pallets. It was just a case of getting them in the right place and screwing and hammering them in. I did realise after I'd started screwing and hammering them in that I didn't want that other pallet there, but by then it was already stuck, I couldn't move it, so I'd have to do quite a bit of moving to get that off later on. Now the part I'm doing now, this that half of it is going to be where the actual casting boxes are. The other half that's planked over and you know that's got floorboards on basically will be where we do where they have like a waterproof area but it won't be closed off or anything okay now it's time to jigsaw off all the the ends of the wood you know the bits that are protruding out only takes a couple of minutes but just go careful with this and basically you could leave them there you know that it's not going to move the pallets or anything but I wanted them all straight and neat edges um, because I'm going to actually have walls up in certain areas of this now I can attempt to get that blinking pallet out what a div filling in the gaps there's my lovely assistant standing by me she helps in most of the stuff I do but often she's just not on camera ok 
There we go. It's not as straight as I'd like it, but it doesn't have to be. You know, it just has to be neat looking. Okay, so we had to stop here, which was a good place to stop. And now we've um, put aside an entire day to do this. So first off, Crystal started by just sanding down the rough edges on the, the floorboards. And I'm going to start making the roof. So this is, I'm just framing bits together. This is called toenailing, and it's where I'm just screwing a screw in a diagonal form into the wood. So now that means that this is now held by two angles, and it's solid enough. Spirit level anyway, no, both. Making sure that it's properly plumb, now I'm screwing the roof back beam into it. It's all straightforward, it, you know, do it in any shape you like, any whatever you like. Measuring the distance between the two, because then I can tell if I'm far enough away on both ends. This can be done without a tape measure, without a spirit level, without any of that. It's just a case of doing it by eye, which I usually do. But I'm being good and showing you how it should be done, in some places at least. Okay, now beam between the two, and again, toenailing in, in a diagonal, so it touches, there we go. Okay, now it's time for the roof. All I'm doing, I, it, it takes me longer doing this this way, because I want to cut the edges of the wood, so they fit in with the slots and the slats of the... Um, of the fence, the fence is um, wood comes protrudes. It's, um, it's the fence is wood protrudes. It's feather edge fencing, so it's you know I'm just trying to get it so it fits in as close to, as possible, so that I can then get to work um, waterproofing it as best I can at this point. This took me about an hour. If if you're just putting slats down, it'll take you ten minutes. You know, put them all down and then um, get the jigsaw and saw them all off again. But I had to do it, you know, specifically and custom fit every single one, which was quite a pain in the bum, to be honest. But I don't mind doing it. And as you'll see, I'm listening to my audiobooks again, so I'm oblivious to the world around me right now. And the last piece of that side. I will be doing the entire roof, but I'm do, doing one side at a time because none of the planks are big enough, you see. If I had big enough planks, I could have just gone all straight across. Now, I'm putting, first off, this is roofing felt, and I'm putting it at the bottom, and then I'm measuring all the way across so it will fit. Um, so it'll fit across the entire roof when I've finished. Now the reason I'm doing this is because when I've done the entire roof, it'll be a lot harder to get into the corners than it is now. So I'm just gonna connect it to the corners, give it a couple of nails, and then roll it back up. Now the reason I started at the bottom is now the next one overlaps. So it means it won't, the water won't get in as it rolls down the hill. It, ro it won't roll up the hill, you see.
Okay, like I said, I'm just sorting it out now and um, tacking it down. So now I can tack it all the way along the inside seam. Um, and that way, yeah, I don't have to stretch over to get to it once all of the actual roof is done. As you can see, the roofing felt is upwards and there'll be wood, uh, there'll be rain that catches in that area. And I'm going to actually fill that with some filler to just avoid that problem. I was going to cut it all and put it all piece by piece into the grooves like I did with the like I did with the wood but it would have just taken way too long so I decided at that point I'm cutting it off and I will do it by hand um, I will do it with filler when I get a chance so again make sure that the bottom one's done first the net uh, the one above it is then done and so on and that way that the water runs down off it and won't go in it And now it's just a case of doing exactly the same on the other side of the um, roof. The only difference is I don't have to cut any of the ends off. I don't have to make it any custom fit. I just line them up, hammer them in, and then when it comes to it, I can just use the jigsaw and cut all the edges off like I did with the flooring. Trying to find a comfortable position when doing this is extremely impossible, but just, you know, get where you can and nail them in. This was a lot faster to do than the other side, having to cut them out for the fence. The reason I'm cutting it off now, not only to make it look nice and beautiful, is I can now put the first full layer of the roofing felt across. Again, this is just to make life easier. I can do it easily from this position, so I might as well put it down now rather than put it down in a little while when it's extremely hard to get to and very uncomfortable. It's all about finding the easiest and most comfortable time to do a job. started to worry I'd get myself trapped here but I carried on and again just slice them off again because it's easier to do here than it would be if I was to do it from the ground and now finally the last few pieces going into place this was a genuinely happy feeling to be honest because I felt like I'd been up on this for quite a lot of time. And cut the stragglers off. Last but not least, the roofing felt. 
Now, as you'll see, right at the top here, I, I'd actually run out of roofing felt, so I've actually had to use squares and bits of offcuts and all sorts, so it won't be perfect. But again, it's for the chickens, it's not for humans to live in, and I think they'll find it quite comfy. Considering the top part of this is actually their outdoor area anyway, it's just to keep a bit of the rain off them. We get quite a lot of rain and I wanted an area that would be outdoors for them, but that's undercover, so if it is pouring with rain, they've got somewhere to be comfortable. So it doesn't really matter if there's a few patchy bits at the top. A lot more nails went into the top bit, as I say, because it was all offcuts, so there was a lot more edges. If you're using a lot of offcuts, just use more nails, well, more tacks in it, to hold them all down as much as possible. If don't put the chickens in it, it's a good place to sunbathe and it would hold my weight. <laughs> End of day one. See you tomorrow.